Before I hit record, I usually come up with something that, you know, just kind of, this is a clear definable statement so you know what's up. And for this game, Revive, I feel like this is the front runner for game of the year. But we got a little year left, but I'm, I'm ready to stick with that statement. Let's talk about it. Ooh, Jeremy makes big statements, so I gotta back that up. Hopefully you understand when I get done why I love this game so much. So, this is a one to four player game by the same design team as The Magnificent, Bad Company, uh, Santa Maria, Capital, uh, Capital Lux. Awesome games, all, good, all very good games. So that's probably why I like this game so much. But in this game, you are basically competing tribes trying to spread out from the ice caps. You are, you know, it was terrible, terrible times. And now you're coming out from the hole in the middle of the board and trying to break through those ice areas and establish your population in different cities and also gather resources, you know, for your groups here. You're not at war. It's, it's sort of civvy, but it's not at all because there's no, it's just really just establishing yourself in certain spots. Uh, there's very little competition as far as like, hey, I'm going to try to hurt you. This is more so pouncing on opportunity. So we'll be talking about that kind of stuff. But let's dig into it. So what are you doing in this game? Well, you have multiple actions in this game that will kind of build an engine. That's what this game at, at its core is, is an engine builder in nature. You're going to be scoring a lot of points if you do this correctly. Um, and if you don't, then you'll get a little bit of that. You'll get a little engine in there, but you, you, you will find this through multiple plays. Now, when I say find it through multiple plays, you have a campaign. Uh, there are five five games in the campaign and you will unlock certain things that are in the box as you go along. There's like a board, there's a one board, punch out board that's red and it says do not punch anything out. Pay attention to that. What I'm showing you today is going to have minor, minor spoilers. That's the reason why I haven't showed the board yet here. And it's going to be some of the first, first things you unlock and believe me, they're necessary to show you what the game potentially can do. Um, so just know that it's character powers and one thing one extra mechanic that you need to know. The rest, I'm not telling you anything, you probably won't notice. Okay, so here we are on our board. We have our, our board out here, our map. We have some places, those are starter places. You mix those up, those go out there. You have all these tiles here, the ice cap tiles that you unveil, those are all mixed up, put out here. You have your outside big cities, those are out here, mixed, 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 those are out here. So variable up the wazoo, we'll be talking about that again. You have your decks of cards. So everybody has six cards. Those six cards will be a different combination of resources on the top and the bottom of those cards. But there is an A, B, and C deck. So right there alone, if you play with the A deck, it's not the B deck. It's not like the C deck and it's not like the D deck. So you have that as well, <laughs> all right? I should even say that these tiles are opposite. They have different stuff on them as well. I'm not gonna give you a spoiler. That opens up as well. Now, your characters, you have all these factions that are in the box, but they also have like a general side and a power side. Now, that's a spoiler if you, I mean, come on. I mean, if you want variable player powers, like you gotta have player powers in the game, right? Uh, we had to wait for Lost Ruins of Arnak to have an expansion to have player powers. So, I mean, come on. Like, I want player powers in the game. I need to talk to you about them. Uh, and then that's it. This is your machine board. Now, your machine board is the core of the game. This is where you're gonna unlock really your engine for the game so that you can take less actual actions and you can do more things as you build pieces and put them inside your board. You're going to unlock these so you can score progress points. You'll be taking these off and lock, lock on them and scoring progress points. And they will also unlock actions and opportunities for you. Well, let's dig into the game. I mean, that's the best way to describe it, what's going on, uh, just to kind of give you some things. Usually in the beginning of the game, you only start with one resource and, and things like that nature. I'm just gonna add some resources in here and take a couple turns so you see what's going on. Now, on your turn in a multiplayer game, you're gonna get two actions and there are, there are several to choose from. You got five. The first and foremost is to flip the switch. Now in the base, base, base game, you are just gonna flip the switch and be able to get a, a general resource. Very early in the campaign, this is one spoiler, you're going to be able to flip the switch and then get the power of a person's card that's already in play in one of their slots. So let's go ahead and talk about that. 
one of the first actions that you really want to know and the core of how you're going to get stuff is playing a card. When you play a card, you can play it in the top part of your machine or you can slide it in the bottom of your machine and take the abilities that are on the bottom. Now, I'm going to slide this on here and then when I do that, I'm going to get two books. The resources in the game are wilds, which are crystals. You have the um, gears, which are for building, so you're going to get more of those so you can build. You have your workshop, your workshop or books, which are going to open up and use for population so you can open up more things on your board and get more of your, your abilities. And then you also have food, and food will help you travel around the board so your people can get to where they wanted to, and also you can build where you want to. So right now, I just got some extra resources. I'm just going to have those resources. But let's just say I wanted to do that again because you get two actions on your turn. I'm going to play this here. You may notice that I have some of these machines on here. Uh, these little pieces right here, they come from over here. You'll earn them during the game. But what they'll do is they go into these slots and they add on top of what you're placing there. So I would get two food for this, one, two, and then I also get two gears for this, one, two. And that would add to that. Now, I've, like I said, I'm cheating a little bit just to show you some of the options you have in the game. So you have play a card, top or bottom, top or bottom of the cards. And as you gain more cards in the game, you'll have more awesome, juicy things that you can do, cards that combo together. In fact, you could play a card like this. That's a yellow card. And it says, take a food and then play another yellow card. And I could play this yellow card and slide it in here like that. You notice I'm just going to be cheating all day here. So then I put this in here and it says I can get one of these tabs. All right. And what if I put this here and I put that there? I get, a, I get that resource. So boom, right there. And the only reason why I get that is because there's a check right there. So that's playing cards. That stuff right there is just alone going to get you more actions and actions because there's more cards that say, hey, if you play this color, then you get to play another color. If you play, um, get points for so-and-so cards being in play, the, they will give you discounts on things. They will have you trade in resources for points. It just depends on how you play the cards. That also will unlock your abilities on your players. So I'll touch on that a little bit later, but we'll talk about that board in a little bit more detail here. The next thing you can do is populate. So, I mean, I'm sorry, explore. Now you want to explore this board because it's going to get you to these spots here. You want to get to these different spots and unlock the tiles. You're going to be exploring through any space that's in here, but you're going to start from this hole and eventually you will no longer start from this hole once you start to establish yourself. What you do is you count the spaces between the place that you want to go and uh, the place you start at and the place you want to go. So if I wanted to move this far, uh, to here, I would have to pay two food. Food is how you travel in this game. Uh, so you pay the food and then you would pay the resources. So for example, if I wanted to go to this four here, I would pay one, two food. Okay, so I pay the one, two food. And then I pay what the resources say on here, which is two more food, one, two food, and two more books, two more books. I flip this over and I get four points. And I get to flip that however I want. I get four points. And then, boom. And then I also get to get a card. Now, that card comes to my, to my side here. So I may want to get a card and kind of choose from these and decide, hey, which one's going to benefit me the most right now? So I'm just going to look at these here. I'm going to grab this one. Let's see. We're going to do this one here. All right. So we're going to do that one there. And then we are going to replace this. And then that is my turn. OK, so now we've explored. OK, now we're going to do something called build. Uh, we're going to build our build out here from this area here. Once I build out here, I can't go back in. Um, I'm just going to build out in this area. I'll show you why in a second. So when we build, we are also going to pay food to get where we need to go. We need to pay at least one food to start from the middle and go out here. So I'm going to go ahead and build a nice big house out there. So I'm going to go ahead and pay there's three for the small ones, and then you have three of these, and this is five for the big ones. And I'll just show you, I'll show you a big one here and just start unlocking this board like crazy. Here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and pay the five resources to move this down. And this, once again, is the build action. You put it out here. Now, when you build next to a lake, you're going to get that resource or what it is. This one here has a bolt, and this one here has a one of these machine parts here. This should be a fifth one here. 
And as I uh, as I get to these spots, these are resources that I want because they're free resources and they're good ones. Uh, so that can help me out. Once again, I can start adding to this so that things are matching up right here. I'm going to match this up right here. And it got, since it has a check, I'm going to get another one of these resources I capped out because I was cheating <laughs> and uh, we're there. But also what I get are these little arrows and those little arrows have to do with these tracks on here. And this is the machine. This is the core of the game. You're going to start unlocking this stuff. And for the big house, for the little houses, I get to move one on that track. For the big houses, I get to move two on that track. But I built a big house, so I'm going to go two on each one of these tracks. And what that means is I'm literally going like one, two on this track here. So once I pass these pace spaces, okay, Boom, I pass that space, I get this resource out of here, and this goes on my progress track. And this progress track is how you'll score points, one of the ways you'll score points in this game. So as you unlock your board, you get abilities like being able to explore one more space for free. And then I get to move, let's see, so that was one, two there. And then on the green track, I get to move one, two there as well. Okay, so, oh, whoops, I switched these up. We're just gonna play that out, right? One, two here. So this comes out right now, and then boom. And, and there's also some th opportunities to move up this track and you'll get resources along the way. So now I have I moved up these things. I've got some new abilities unlocked. And also, when these eventually match up, they'll cross certain lines. So let's say this gets to three, and then I start to pass all the way through this stuff. If I pass the certain spot here, these will unlock kind of like they come together and cross and give you different abilities during the game. I'm not going to get too deep in the weeds with that one, but I want you to know that, like there's ways you start unlocking your board and getting different things. Like you'll even get these artifacts. And artifacts have to do with your your card here. This card is your end game card and it also will give you more points for the different things that you're trying to find in the game. So like if I get more of these crates here, those crates will give me multipliers. Um, like here, if I get the certain thing that matches it. I'm not going to get too deep in the end game stuff, but that's kind of how it works. You want to have more of these and you'll be competing over trying to get those um, through different parts of the game, through parts on your board, uh, different ways like that. And of course, there'll be more if you had more players in the game. Next thing, you want to establish yourself in a city. And I no longer can count from here. Now I have to count from here. Now I've, I've started to build out, okay? So I've started to build out. And now I'm counting my spaces from there. So now I'm going to do my population. So what I'll do is I'll spend uh, two of these resources to, to unlock my board. And then I also need to spend a food, because there's one space between, to go there. So then I can place my people there, okay? Now, what have I done by doing that? As you put more people out there, as you put more people out, you will start to unlock more abilities on your board. Now, I already have this ability here, an idea, I'm not gonna get into that, but right, right now, you are going to unlock something special from them. And as you unlock more of these, you'll start to get cool things. And they each have their own kind of way of playing the game, asymmetric kind of thing like that. And uh, this one here specifically, as you play cards with her, she needs to have a card with a specific icon on it. Let me see if I can dig for it right now. Oh my God, this is live. This is in a review. 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 It's amazing how that card has not showed up yet so far. Oh, boom. <laughs> here you go. So if you have a card with this ability icon on here, you're going to put this, uh, you're going to have this ability. So boom, you play this card. Let's say we played this card. You can use one of these ability tokens. And as you unlock these, you'll have more abilities as well. Uh, and what will happen is you can, for her specifically, she can start to build and put trees out there like that. OK, and as she puts trees out there, not only will um, buildings that she has give benefits. So like, for example, if I put it right here, she would be able to get um, some benefits from it. But also she get books and kind of create this trail. And what she eventually does is she starts to use the forest to kind of move around the board because she's like a plant lady. She's like poison ivy. She starts to build this kind of plant thing and water thing because she's like an earth person and she can use that as movement for free instead of paying for food. So that's just kind of the, one of the things that you know some of the characters can do. I'm not going to spoil the rest of them because I don't want to go full spoilers here. But that's playing cards. You have uh, playing cards top and bottom. You have your building buildings so you can move around these tracks and more of these tracks as they open I should say. They're going to add more abilities. 
okay? And as you open those, you'll be having to make choices along the way of what abilities go in there. Of course, I put two of the same in there. And then some of those will give you certain things as you start to add to them. So for example, if I add to this and I put my, my little lightning bolt on here that I've earned, this one says I can play one of my cards right here for the top. I can put this in my discard pile like that. And then I would be able to play it for its ability, which is give me one or more of these resources. So you have this one here that allows me to play cards upside down so I can play them however I want. And that's just kind of some of the things that you can start to build off of these things. But you have control because these will always come back out and you'll have choices along the way. You may also hibernate. So hibernate is how you get to get all your stuff back. And it's also how you got to build your deck to know what's coming up in there. Because what will happen when you hibernate, and this is the only thing you can do when you hibernate, is you will take all those cards back like this. All of these cards will come back like this. You'll get access to your bolts again. And you'll also get your little switch back. Okay. So those are all the things you can do in the game. Now you're thinking to yourself like, dude, that was like, that's it? <laughs> yeah, it is, that's it. But the thing is, is once you get more of these cards going, you're gonna have pleasing turns where you may not even take one action. And just by playing one of these bolts in the right timing with the right way, you may not even take one action, you've played four or five cards, okay? So what does that do? What does that lead into? Um, you are gonna have situations where AP is gonna get very long, okay? So there's gonna be turns where you're, you're gonna have to wait, okay? On the top of the fact that there are pleasing turns for everybody at certain points, there is also gonna be some frustration from the long, can you get this, can you get that? And there's also gonna be, uh, possibility of cheating going on. So I, I think that's something that this game will allow in a sense because you're just going to see it. You're, you're not necessarily paying attention to how everybody's doing their thing because you're trying to pay attention to your thing. And that's something you may want to pay attention to this one because a lot of resources are coming out, being flipped as we're talking, you know, doing things. The people are unlocking stuff on their board. And if at some point during the game they happen to have all these bolts, they're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. As they hibernate, they're going up this track as well. So they're getting these benefits, grabbing things. Ooh, this is a free action. I get this. They start moving up the track. Then maybe they hit five points at the same time. So they go back in here. Keep Keep adding more to their thing and it's it, like I said that's exciting but it also leads to cheating okay it also leads to cheating so you got to watch out for that kind of stuff yeah you know, also you want to pay attention to player interaction now there is player interaction in this game the player interaction comes from using this switch to also open up someone else's stuff the player ac action also comes from maybe you build on your second action and you open up opportunities for someone else when it's their turn to play. So if you get two actions and you build, and you build, things can happen that will help you and hurt you. So maybe you built right here and you flip this tile over and you can turn it however you want. Well, you get those benefits right there. So boom, great. But what if you made the mistake and you did this instead for your second turn? What that means is red player, green player, blue player can pounce on that opportunity and take the spot. So it's kind of a mismanagement thing on your part, but at the same time, there may be situations where you don't find much. Um, or let's say you open one of these and you find a city tile instead. Well, that was what you were looking for and now you have a city tile that's wide open. Somebody can take that over. But the cool thing about that is, is that you can share, you can share the spot with someone else, but you got to pay them to do it. So there's a little interaction there, a little bit of benefits for being first in cities because you're going to get that as well. Other than that, uh, the end game is triggered basically when these are gone, uh, these artifacts are gone. And once again, those are going to have to do with your end game cards. You can continue to earn points for that as well. But generally, you're going to get points for having this stuff on the progress track, these tiles right here. If you open up all the way down on any of these tracks like so, you are going to have uh, you're going to have access to getting paid for the cards that you have in your deck that are non starters. You're also just going to have a ton of points from your board if you've opened it up. And then you're also going to get points uh, just for having the artifacts that match up with the things that you need at the end of the game that are multipliers. A little bit more about this game. 
the amount of variability in this game is absolutely amazing insane okay <laughs> amazing insane anyway you are going to have a lot of tiles to mix up and you're going to have even more things to mix in there during the during your campaign trail and that right there alone makes this game different it makes the strategy different you may all you may literally be looking at the board and going ooh at the beginning of the game now that does lead to people definitely being left out i ha actually had that happen to someone on the channel as well uh, that looked at it and was like what are you talking about you got to let people know what's up you also have how you're going to open up your machine your your area here because you're going to have access to these and they're going to be different every, every single time. time and as you unlock these spots you're going to have to make a choice of what goes in there and then once that happens, then you're going to kind of set up another little combo thing, not just in your cards, but how you're going to use these things. Because just even the simple power like this, um, this power like this, I can take this card and place it into here. OK. And what that does is when I hibernate, now I have those cards. OK. So you're kind of setting yourself up with these different combos. I mean, being able to play a card flipped over is amazing. You can even open up a fifth fifth slot here to to play cards flipped over. There's so much there. There's so much there to do. Um, another thing is, is that this is sort of a race. So you got to make sure, just like with that player interaction, this is sort of a race. And you got to, you know, you got to realize that. Otherwise, you will get left in the dust. I would say your first game, first game or two, you probably aren't going to be doing so well. Um, I think that's really it, honestly. I think this game is special. Okay? I think this game is special. And of course, a year from now, I could be... It could be on my salesman. I mean, for God's sakes, right? We don't know. Uh, but I think this game is definitely special. It has that pleasing set of turns. It has uh, interesting choices on every turn as you open up. You have characters that are very, very different. I didn't even I didn't even go too deep into this character and what it looks like as they spread and they make their influence around here. I played with Ryan. He was absolutely crushing with this. I finally unlocked what she what she does best. And you got to rely on these abilities because they give you so much advantage as you go along. Um, I, I just that's the thing. These are types of games that I love that give me so much action on my turn and uh, just the simplicity of knowing, you know, once you get this board going and you get the cards going, it just feels so freaking good, man. And I'm trying to think of anything else bad to say about this game. and <laughs> I just cannot think of anything. So why harp on negativity, right? This is Revive. I give this game a 9 out of 10. This is MVM approved baby. And whatever that means to you, that means to you. This is a fantastic game of the year. It is a front runner for game of the year. And I'll leave it there. All right, party people, you take care and you have a wonderful day. Leave the comments in the comments below. Whatever you want to say, whatever questions you have, let me know. Take care.